Do we have any other non-Muslims before we go to the next question? We do at this mic? Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello to you, sir. My name is Mohit and I am employed in an IT company. My question to you is, if there is a judgment day set and after the death everybody has to be taken care of by God and every of their good deeds and bad deeds are to be settled uh, at the judgment day, so why since the birth a person is mad or throughout his life he is he or she is suffering from the disease and after that I mean the brother asked a very good question that if there is good and bad based on that on the day of judgment God will punish you or may reward you so what justification it is that some people are born handicapped some people have congenital defects some people have heart problem so is God unjust now based on this information the Hindu scholars, they came up with a new philosophy. If you realize, if you read the Vedas, Vedas speak about punar janam. Punar means next, janam means birth, next birth. Even Quran speaks about next birth, next life. Quran says that God has given you life, you come in this world, He'll cause you to die, He'll reject you again. So Vedas says the same thing. But the Hindu scholars, they could not understand that how could God be unjust, that He makes some people born handicapped, some people wealthy, some people poor. So they came with the philosophy of birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, which is not mentioned in the Vedas. He is born handicapped because in his last birth, he sinned. He is born poor because in last birth he sinned. It is their thinking, not of the scriptures. In Islam, we come in this world once and once is sufficient. Then we are resurrected and then the day of judgment. Now coming to your basic question, what reply does Islam has? Why some people are born healthy, some people with disease, with congenital defects, some people rich, some people poor. If we analyze, Quran says in several places including Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, and Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse 155. Allah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made your children and your wealth as a test for you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. Now depending upon the test, if the examination paper is difficult, the correction is lenient. If the examination paper is easy, the correction is strict to justify. So Almighty God tests different people in different ways. Normally in an examination every year, the test paper keeps on changing. You don't have the same questions. If you have the same question, then where is the test? So now, depending upon the examination you undergo, for example, one of the pillars of Islam is that you have to give zakat. Anyone who's rich, who has a saving of more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity. Now, one person is rich, for him, he has to give zakat. A person who's poor, he has to give no zakat. So in the zakat category, he gets 100 out of 100. For the rich man, for the rich man, he may say, okay, fine, I may have 1 million dirhams. I'll give zakat only on 100,000 dirhams. Maybe he'll get 10 marks out of 100. May get 50 marks, may get zero marks. For the poor man, we say, hey, bichara hai, poor man. Actually, he's getting 100 out of 100 in zakat. For him, there's no test of wealth. For rich man, there's a test of wealth. You may think, oh, rich man, very good, God has blessed him. It's more difficult for a rich man to go to Jannah than a poor man. That's what a beloved Prophet Muhammad said. We may think it's a blessing, it may be a test. Similarly, on the other hand, the person is poor. For him to do hijab, they stay in one room. For him to do hijab or her to do hijab is difficult. For a rich man who has got a big mansion, many houses, for the lady to hijab is easy. So there hijab is easier for a rich person, difficult for a poor person. So based on the condition, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's easy. There are parents who may be pious. Now they have a child who has a congenital heart disease. Maybe God is testing the parents more. 
Now the parents may say, oh, I've been praying five times a day. Why do I have a son who has a heart disease? God is testing them. If really the parents are good, what they will say, Alhamdulillah, at least God gave me a son. So what if he has a congenital disease? Now more difficult the test, higher is the reward. To pass BA is very easy. Graduation in arts, very easy. To pass MBBS is difficult. But the moment you pass MBBS, you get doctor's degree, doctor, DR. More difficult the test, maybe Almighty God wants to put the parents in Jannati Firdos. Almighty God is testing the parents with a son who has a heart disease. Yet if the parents have faith in Allah, it's a test for the parents. Nowhere does the Quran say that if a person is poor, he'll go to hell. It's more easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. Nowhere does the Quran say that if a person has a congenital heart disease, he'll go to hell. We feel, oh, bichara hai. For him, actually, the test is easy. We, with our human logic, start thinking, poor man, so poor. Actually, the poor man to go to Jannah is easier. So Almighty God tests different people in different ways. Depending upon the test, the examination, the correction is lenient or strict. That's the reason the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust in the least degree. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3, verse 185, that Kullu Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense is on the day of judgment. So based on the test, the final judgment is on the day of judgment. Some reward you'll get in this world, some reward you'll get in the hereafter. Whenever there's any calamity, any calamity, it can either be a punishment or a test. If you're on the straight path, that calamity is a test for you. If you're on the wrong path, it's a punishment for you. Similarly, when you get something good in your life, it can either be a reward or a test. If you're on the straight path, that good thing is a reward for you. Or it may be a test for you. Wealth is not always a reward. It is more of a test for you. God is testing you that with this wealth, do you spend it in the way of Allah or not? So based on this, Almighty God tests different people in different ways. Some people are born rich, some in a poor family. Some people are born healthy, some people are born congenital defect. Depends upon the test. He tests everyone in different ways and the final judgment is on the day of judgment. Based on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the human beings in hell or heaven. Hope that answers the question. Uh, in addition, sir, uh, to the same question, I have another. Uh, based upon your answers only, I have uh, one more doubt. Can I question that? Go ahead. All right, uh, sir, you said that uh, Allah is going to test everybody and like that. But why Allah is doing that? I mean, why God or Allah is doing that? Uh, why, why He created us and for His joy or for, I mean, watching us from uh, up, I mean, up there and uh, Very I mean, good question. why we all, all have been created? Brother, the question, why has He created us human beings? Is He testing us? Is He enjoying using us like puppet? Very good question. That's answered in the Quran. All the other mountains, trees, they are Muslims, they have submitted their will to God. Human being is the best creation of Almighty God. The best creation, why? Because He has given us a free will. He has given human being a free will either to obey or disobey God. All the other creations, the animals, the birds, the trees, the mountains, they are Muslims. Muslims means they have submitted their will to God. Now Almighty God created a new creation which has a free will. The angels have got no free will. They always obey God. Now, after a free will has been given to you, you have a choice to obey or disobey God. After a free will has been given to you, and then if you obey God, you become higher than the angels. After a free will has been given to you, and then you disobey God, you become lower. You may become like a Satan. So it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 72, that... Almighty God asks, who wants to undergo the test? If you don't want to undergo the test, just pass. So trees, mountain, all of them said, we fear to undergo the test. The Quran says, the human beings were fools who said, okay, we want to undergo the test. Now when you undergo the test, you can either become superior to the angel or you can become like a Satan. 
now if you don't undergo the test just pass so we human beings all these human beings are the people who said okay fine we don't want to just pass we want to get good marks and we are undergoing the test this is a new creation of almighty god not that you want to enjoy he is giving you a chance to get distinction we were fools who said okay fine so not to enjoy to give you a chance to get distinction not just pass now it is on you and me whether we follow the commandment of almighty god or not if you do you will get distinction if you don't you won't get hope that answers the question wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin thank you